By the end of this lesson, students will be able to explain how peptide linkages are formed between amino acid molecules, describe the structure of proteins, describe the hydrolysis of proteins. Two molecules of amino acids can react to form an amide. Let us look at the example given. The carboxyl group of glycine can react with the amino group of alanine. Click on the carboxyl group of the glycine molecule. What molecule is eliminated in this bond formation? Answer. A water molecule. What kind of reaction has occurred? Answer. Condensation reaction. The product formed by condensation reaction of two amino acids is an amide called dipeptide. Can you name the bond formed between the carboxyl group and the amino group? Answer. Peptide linkage or amide linkage. The amino group of the glycine molecule can also react with the carboxyl group of alanine. Click on the amino group of the glycine molecule. By convention, the formulae of dipeptides are always written with the amino group, the N-terminus, on the left and the carboxyl group, the C-terminus, on the right. Drag and drop the names of the two amino acids, alanine and valine, into the empty boxes to form four different dipeptides. A long chain molecule called a polypeptide is formed as further condensation reaction continues at the free amino and carboxyl groups in a dipeptide formed. Click on the dipeptide to view a polypeptide being formed. A polypeptide can fold or coil or become associated with other polypeptide chains to form a protein. Proteins have four levels of structure, namely primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structures. Click on the primary button. The primary structure refers to the amino acid sequence in the polypeptide chain. The diagram shows the general formula for the primary structure. Different proteins have different alkyl groups or R1, R2 or R3 components in their amino acids. This primary structure represents the peptide backbone of a protein. Now click the secondary button. The secondary structure describes the three-dimensional arrangement of the polypeptide chain. There are two types of secondary structures. Click on the alpha helix coil button. Hydrogen bonds between the amide hydrogen and the carbonyl oxygen 
Hold the structure together into a coiled form. Click the beta pleated sheet button. Now click the tertiary button. The alpha helices and pleated sheet are folded further into complicated shapes. These three-dimensional shapes are held in place by hydrogen bonds, sulfur bridges and ionic bonds. Proteins can be classified as either fibrous or globular according to their three-dimensional shape. Click on fibrous. Fibrous proteins consist of polypeptide chains arranged side by side in long filaments. They are usually tough and insoluble in water. They function primarily as structural parts of the organism. Examples are tendons, horns and muscles. Now click on globular. Globular proteins are usually coiled into compact and roughly spherical shapes. These proteins are soluble in water and are mobile within cells. They usually function as enzymes or hormones. Examples are insulin, hemoglobin and ribonuclease. Summary Two molecules of amino acids can undergo condensation reaction to form an amide called dipeptide. The two amino acids are joined by peptide linkage. Further condensation reaction of dipeptides continues to form a polypeptide. A polypeptide can fold or coil or become associated with other polypeptide chains to form a protein. Proteins have four levels of structure, namely primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structures. Proteins can be classified as fibrous or globular. Proteins can be hydrolyzed to its individual amino acids by boiling with dilute mineral acids or aqueous alkalis or by the action of enzymes. Click the hydrolysis button. Summary. A protein can be hydrolyzed to its individual amino acids by boiling with dilute mineral acid or aqueous alkali or by the action of enzymes. Proteins play an important role in a wide variety of functions in living organisms. Dietary protein is hydrolyzed in the body to individual amino acids. Some of these amino acids are used to synthesize proteins needed by the body. Some are broken down further to supply energy to the body and some are used as starting materials for the synthesis of non-protein compounds such as thyroxine and adrenaline. Click on the proteins button. Summary. Proteins play an important role in a wide variety of functions in living organisms.